Oh. Okay. Um, I see that uh, we've gone live, um, and today I am setting up to do uh, another art uh, painting, and I've got a little bit of uh, extra. I've got a guest. So first of all, I'm going to wear my, I, I got a special painting um, apron, because I'm at home, and I spend a lot of time with one of my favorite artists. I'm lucky that way, um, and that artist is my wife. So I've got my, I've got my painter my painter thing that says husband this is gonna be cute and then uh, I'd like to introduce Kendra my wife she's gonna come on there you go hi hey you guys so I know students are tuning in uh, I'm just gonna leave open the option I'm gonna say hello you guys say hello if you have any questions or suggestions as always I'm happy to react to those uh, on the fly so um, we are going to do some acrylic painting. So we have a goal in mind today uh, to do some art. And so if you guys, uh, you know, planned ahead, there was talk about acrylic painting and had supplies, that's great. But if you don't, the good news is that you can always come back to my YouTube channel and watch it a second time. And then once you've got the supplies. So um, can I show this? Yep. All right. This is our, this is our, we're going to paint along to make, ooh, let me see. There we go. Uh, to make this and uh, this, this looks like it's a pretty complex painting, but it's one of those ones that you can Do a couple of tricks and then it can be done uh, very very quick. So we are gonna try Oh, they, I didn't even notice the bird on there. That's cute. Yeah, there's a bird in the tree. There's there you go. The okay, so um, So today I'm uh, gonna take the back seat and Kendra is gonna be the one um, That's kind of in charge. So I'm gonna turn this and move it a little bit and then we can both be on Read there. Okay. All right. So what are we doing? Well, we have, we're going to use cardboard as our canvas. Um, the reason this is nice is because it already has a toned background. If you were to use a white canvas, you would probably want to go in and do an underpainting, but we can just jump right in. Also, we're recycling, so plus plus. Um, and then when you're ready, we can start painting. So yeah. I guess the colors we're going to use today, it's really minimal, which is nice. White, black. Uh, red and yellow. Those are the only colors we're going to need. Um, you're going to want to have a few different paint brushes, but if you only have like one or two, that's fine. Again, it's a pretty basic painting. Um, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so I just noticed that I, that I have a friend uh, tuning in uh, who, who I uh, uh, call Essay. Oh. Essay is uh, tuning in, and he says that the bird on your painting is a hornbill. Well, it was supposed to be like an eagle. I was just going for bird of prey, but I mean, is is that accurate? Is it a bird of prey? I, I mean, a hornbill. Yeah, probably. Kind of got like the 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 sharp beak and stuff. Anyway. Yeah. You can make your bird whatever you want. You don't even have to do a bird. You could do a dragon. You could leave the tree blank. It doesn't matter. That's the nice thing about art. All right. Are you ready, students? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, if you look at this, you'll see that we have kind of a gradient background. So we're going to just go right on the canvas with our paint. I'm not even going to use a palette for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a daub of yellow paint here and here, a daub of red paint here, here, and here. And then we're going to start working the paint over the canvas, starting with our light color and then going into the red. And eventually we're going to get a nice gradual bleed and that'll create the sunset uh, both in the sky and in the reflection in the water. All right. Okay, so I will go first, I guess. You want me to put your blobs on for you? Uh, sure. Okay. So my blob is about the size of maybe the tip of my thumb. It's not too big. Um, the one in the middle is, is even smaller than the ones on the top and bottom. All right, let me see if we can see. Yeah, we can see where those marks are. Yeah. I can um, go in and zoom a little bit. I do have a, I do have a second camera. If we want to take a closer look, this is my portable phone camera so um, I think we can I think we can see let's see if that I mean that's a slightly closer view but not terribly closer um, I can then, also move my yeah a lot of things could move my canvas forward there we go so far I really like how much work um, I've had to do yeah I'm uh, I'm contributing to this uh, artwork okay all right so Cody grab your largest brush there okay so I, I left you a couple brushes. So Cody has, he has picked the second largest brush. All this right. is actually, Let's trade. yes. I, I, this one's taller though. Okay. Well, I guess 
I should have been more flair. Oh, and we okay. need a we need a rag. So I have my painter rag, which I've used a whole bunch of times. All right. Here. All right. So start blending. Uh, start with the yellow, and then work your way out. Okay. So just and you see how we are seeing through to the back to the cardboard. That's actually really nice. So I have my yellow is kind of on there, and now I'm going to go with the red. Now red is very heavy in pigment, um, so you actually don't need as much red to to cover a space as you do some other colors. Like a little bit of red goes a really long way. Alright, so I'm still just blending. If I, I'm going to need to add a little bit more paint to mine, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that in a second. So I'm going to add a bit more yellow. You might have to go back and forth and add a little bit more color. If you have too much, it'll probably just blend in nicely. Cody's is turning out well. His uh, cardboard is a warm tone and mine is a cool tone. So that's going to actually make a little bit of difference in the final artwork. There we go. I think I need more yellow. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, so when you're doing your yellow, mm. I kind of like clean a little bit of the red off my brush with my with my rag and then I go into the yellow. And eventually you'll just get a nice orange color. Can I use this rag? Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, the yellow, the yellow is like a weaker color, so you have, you have to you have to conserve it because the red will just take over. Yeah, exactly. All right, I need a lot more yellow on Oh mine. boy, I'm painting on the actual backdrop. No. That's not encouraged. It is not encouraged, but it happens. All right. Now I have a porous cardboard and you have a smooth cardboard, so I have a little bit more work to do here. Can I use water to make this more runny? You can, but you shouldn't have to. If you use water, you're going to dilute the paint and you're going to see the cardboard even more. And it might start to look a little bit muddy, so I would avoid it. All right, I'm going to have to throw some more red on there then, because yep. mine's not covered in the ground. You go ahead and... Mine's, now mine's going to get messy. I'm not following it. No, you're, you're doing just fine. So far, so good. If you, you're going to have to, you know, add more paint as you go. That's totally fine. We've added more yellow already. I might even have to add more red. But do you see how I'm starting to get that really nice gradient on mine? Where I've kind of pulled a little bit of that red into the yellow, and then I've pulled the yellow into the red. You guys are watching me type. I'm answering my friend Essay's question. He made me a. What did he ask? Uh, he made me a mask a little while ago, my uh, Iron Man mask, and it's one of those projects that I actually want to take on while I'm here at home. I think it's a good academic pro pro project that makes uh, something beautiful. So, uh, to to be continued, but I still haven't gotten the mask to. I have an Iron Man mask, and I want it to open when I say open. Oh, your red is very vibrant. I would actually pull a little bit of the yellow up into that red. Yeah, I think we've been painting yellow and red for a while. Well, you're not quite getting the same blend, so what you sh what I want you to do is just... I'm going to kill it with a ton of yellow. Is that what I should do? Yes, actually. All right. But take your yellow, so start, do a couple lines of yellow, and then pull it down into the red and pull it up into right. this red. i got to clean my brush, because my, get... my brush is actually, like, covered in red, yeah. and the red is just, the red is just the destroying red all my red. yellow. Yeah. All right. So, so work from the yellow out, and then every time you get too much red, clear your brush. All right. Well, there, there, that look how look how that yellow's phasing in pretty nicely. So these are two. We're using tube paints today, uh, but I do think you could probably get away with the Dollarama. Oh, you told acrylics. Me. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Oh yeah. There we go. I want to get that See, orange action. You do want the orange action, yeah. And when you go back into your yellow, I'd clean the brush first because your brush is going to pick up a lot of that red. Yeah. I'm just going to add a bit more yellow. Mine's looking pretty good, though. Oh, so boy. Whenever you're ready to keep going, we'll, yeah. we'll just move on. I think. I think. Uh, maybe I'll. I'm I think just, you can do I'm looking at yours, blending. and your, 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 your yellow has kind of like become mostly orange. Yeah, it has. I'm adding a bit more yellow into mine. Um, nice. And where I'm going to add a little bit of a oh, bright no. spot to mine here. Do so you see in this one we have a sun? Uh, you let can me actually, see. You I'm not sure if we can see that. Give me a second here. Oh. Okay. So show me that one again. Okay. See in here how we have the sun? Yes. So 
there's a little bit more of a highlight here. You actually naturally have that happening in yours because your yellow is a little bit more saturated, and I just added that here to mine. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do you All wanna, right. I'm do you ready. Go I'm ready for more. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is add in our sun. So we're going to kind of clean our brush. You can actually switch to a smaller brush. Oh, okay. Point. Can I use the brush I originally wanted to use? I would use an even smaller brush. Oh, I really, I really want this one I mean, to get some play to it. mean, you can. You can. All right. No, it's fine. It's, it's yeah. fine. So I'm using this brush, which is about the size of my pinky. Okay. That brush is that brush is perfect. Okay. So we don't want to go on the straight white. We're going to use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white, maybe 50-50. So getting low on my paint here. Okay. Yellow and white. Oh, can I use your palette? No. No. I don't. don't we're not. Me. We're not sharing. We're not sharing we, paint. Yeah. So. I've got this on, sitting on a little palette. We're going to get some white on there, too. Yeah. Is that cadmium white? Uh, it is titanium, titanium white. Titanium white. I think cadmium is a red. Okay. So I don't know if there is a cadmium white. Maybe I'm making up colors right you now. You might be. You might be making up colors. Okay. Ugh, all right. That's enough. So we're going to do the sun. Now, there's probably still, since we're working quickly, your paint might be a little bit wet. Yeah. Um, where you're going to be adding the sun, but that's okay. So just mix a little bit of that white and that yellow. Mm -hmm. The sun is going to be the brightest thing on the, the image, and then the next brightest thing is going to be the reflection in the water. So I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow and mixing it into the white. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. There we go. Look at that. You might even want a little more white. All right. Oh, but Actually, then... no, no, no. You've got white on the back of your brush. That might be fine. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's a very light yellow. Yeah, very light yellow. That's perfect. All right. All right. So now we're going to add in our sun, which is just a circle in the sky. You can put your sun anywhere on your painting. I'm going to put mine on my little highlight that I've created here. And we want it to be above that red. It's hard to sometimes do a perfect circle. I'm actually going to switch to a more round brush. Oh, boy. My brush got really red. Yeah, you gotta be careful of the wet paint on there. If you press lightly, then you won't pick up as much paint from the bottom. But you don't want your sun to be pure white, so it is, it's okay to pick up a little bit of paint. There we are. I feel like I need a lot more white. Yeah, yours is still, you have a thicker layer of paint, so you might want to add a little more white. If you want to avoid picking up paint, one thing you can do is dab the paint on okay. instead of brushing it on, because then when you brush it on, you you kind of scrape that bottom layer a little bit. Okay, that kind of dabbing works. Yeah, dabbing is a great technique with painting. Oh no, I'm not. My circle's getting fuzzy. Yeah, it is, but that's okay. Maybe there's a cloud in front of your set. I think we need to work with that. Let's see if we can get even closer. There we go. Look mm -hmm. at that. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is put in our, wait, where, where am I showing this? Oh, wait, I'm going to flip it. Okay, we're going to add in our horizon line, and that is just going to be a black silhouette with little trees, um, maybe some hills, just whatever we're seeing in the silhouette. And we're going to put that right here where we've added the red in the middle, right in the middle of that red. Wait, show me on your painting again. Right here. And, and we're taking white across that? We're taking black. Black. Oh. All right. So uh, let me let me just switch that. There we go. Okay. Back to the other view. So I like to use a brush, like a flat brush for something like this rather than a round brush. The brush you have is good. Yeah. Yeah. So now we just need some black. There we are. Yeah, that's plenty of black. You won't actually need that. I don't think that. Yeah, am I switching brushes? No, you can use that brush, but I would just wipe it down because otherwise you'll get like okay. a gray and you want this to be black. Okay. So I'm just putting it on kind of the tip of my brush. Yep. I don't want to. I don't want to get the whole brush wet with paint. Uh -oh. And then I'm going to go from above. This is kind of tricky because we want to paint a straight line. So I'm actually going to stand to do this. And I'm just going to 
start here. Oops. And go like that. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight, but. All right, I'm gonna try that out. I feel like when I'm sitting, I actually have a lot of trouble getting a line across my page. Oh yeah, I'm getting some bumps. Yeah, I need to stand to do something like that. Bumps are fine. I mean, nature's full of bumps. Okay. So yeah, something like that. That would be the places where you have the line kind of bulging at the bottom would be like having a little piece of land jutting out over the water. So okay. that's, that's completely acceptable. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is add in our trees. Are we looking here? Is this the camera? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the camera. Okay, so we're going to be adding in these little shrubs, these trees, the little silhouettes that we're seeing over the horizon. So, um, the, a good way to do that is actually to dab with the corner of your brush. So get a dry brush. Don't put too much paint on it. Oh, I just put too much paint on it. You might actually want to switch to a larger brush. Okay. Okay. You can use that brush you really want to use. Oh, good. Yeah. And don't put it in water. Just put it directly. Um, I'll switch to this brush. This one. I'm, this is the one I'm using. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's being neglected. But it's very expensive. All right. All right. Yeah, dry, so just, and dry brush it. Yeah. Just the, yeah. Just a little bit. And then go in and wherever you want, just kind of tap, tap, tap. And what that's going to do is it'll give us little holes where the light's coming through those trees. If we were to go in and just blob thick layers of paint on, those trees would look like solid blocks, and that's not the way that trees work. There's light that comes through. They're not perfect circles either, so feel free to, you know, make one side taller than the other. I'll give them a little... I don't think my brush is being dry enough. Yeah, you have to have a pretty dry brush. You're doing pretty good. I'm just using the corner of mine. That gives me a little bit more control. And then right against the horizon line, if you want to add some bushes in there, you can. Just drop, drop them in the same way. Just tap in. This is a really good opportunity to fix any little mistakes that you might have, like if you had a, a paint stroke that came up too high or something when you were doing your horizon line. You can cover all that stuff up right now. Are you saying I didn't make mistakes? I'm saying I made mistakes. Okay, okay. There we go. So now we have some bushes and stuff like that. I'm leaving this space open because I'm going to put in a tree, um, just a tree with no leaves on it right there. So I don't want it to get too complicated. All right. Okay. So now we can add in our tree. Oh, I'm just going to add a little bit more shrubbery. Oh yeah. Line. You're doing like a, a tr one tree that's like got no, no shrubbery. It's just branches. Yeah. It's just branches. It looks kind that's of That's where like the hornbill sits. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So now we are going to switch to back to our, our thinner brush, our flat brush. Mm -hmm. And we're going to paint our tree. Still just using black paint. Um, we're going to, can I show this? Where, yep. do I, where do I show this? Okay. So you see on this tree, we're not going straight up, right? We're going at a little bit of an angle. Things that grow in nature aren't perfect. So we're, you know, the, the branches aren't perfectly straight. So feel free to like loosely put them in with your brush. Something else to keep in mind is the base of the tree trunk is always going to be thinner than the top of the tree trunk. And where it attaches, where the branches attach, those are thicker than when they go out. So if you are pressing a little bit harder here and you lift up the brush as you're going, that's going to create a, a naturally, um, a line that naturally goes from thick to thin. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to be doing. All right, so put in your, your main trunk. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect line, kind of better if it isn't. Here's my block. I might have to borrow some here. I got lots. And then I'm going to have mine kind of split off at the top here, like I did in my example painting. I thought that was really nice. Yeah, branches are a lot like 
like limbs on a person. You know, the, the top of your arm is thicker than the, the bottom of your arm. And where there's joints, it gets a little bit thicker as well. Um, and that's the same with trees. Where they join, there's a little bit more of the growth that happens there. Right. And there's exceptions to every rule, but that's the generally how you paint trees. And then the branches that come off of the big branches like this tend to be smaller. Everything gets smaller as you go out. Like your fingers are smaller than your arm and your arm is smaller than your torso. The same sort of rules apply to trees. Okay, I'm going to do a second one. I'm actually going to do my second one going like this. Oh, you're doing two trees. I am doing two trees. You don't have to do two trees. It's nice though, because every tree shouldn't have a little friend. Shouldn't have a little friend. Though, shouldn't yeah. be out there alone, poor little tree. Little Bob Ross inspiration yeah, there. there. You go. Yeah. All right. All right. And then you can have some short branches, some little stubby branches that broke off on the bottom. All that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now because I have my sort of my big branches in there and I don't want my extending branches to be thicker than the branches I've already put in. So I'm switching back to my small brush now. I'm just going to do some little scraggly, scraggly details here. Adding a little bit of water to your paint at this point might help because it thins it out and that allows you to get thinner lines. This is the first time that we've used water, I think, in the whole thing. Yeah. So we've just been using pure pigment. Oh, but you're using your tiny brush. Yes, I, I Okay, I, you did a switch. I did a switch. I said it out loud, but I didn't. I, I, was, I was not paying attention. If you want to put a bird on your tree, kind of think about where that placement is going to be because you don't, you want to leave a nice open spot for that bird. Otherwise it'll get muddy and you won't actually know that there's a bird in there at all. Adding in some branches. There we go. We just had the question of, uh, maybe we missed the intro, but this is, this is my, for people who are tuning in, this is my wife, Kendra, and uh, we are lucky because she is a better artist than me, uh, and so we can learn uh, a skill. All right, I've been falling behind. I'm, you're making tiny branches I'm off of your bigger branches? tiny branches off of my bigger okay, branches. Okay, let me see if I can, let's see if I can catch up. Yeah, and as, as I was mentioning before, as we do these, small like the smaller branches are on the, the edges of the tree and the thicker branches are closer to the trunk of the tree. All right. Yeah, and you don't have to do too many. Um, and you've done two trees, so you can have branches cross over. That's how it would work in nature. There would oh, be yeah. some branches that would extend over and cross into the other, uh, the other tree. So don't don't feel like you can't do stuff like that. Oh, that's my phone. Oh, someone really wants to get. All phone. right, give me a second. Kendra's going to carry on teaching. All right. All right. Well, I feel like pretty good about my painting so far. Just adding in a couple more branches up top here. And then we can jump into doing our reflection. There we go. Okay. So for the reflection, I'll just come in so you can see the example painting. We don't want to replicate this tree perfectly. What we're going to do is we're going to take the biggest chunks of that tree and put them in the water, but we're going to imagine that this surface is moving because in real life that's what would be happening. Um, so it's going to be kind of broken up. We don't want a straight line. We want kind of a, a squiggly line that breaks up over places that would have highlights and shadows from the waves of the water. So that's my next step. Uh, so I'm just going to use my small brush to do this. But I'm going to always be thinking about that bigger tree. Um, so I'm just going to kind of throw some very loose, not, not being too picky about it. Some loose little reflections, getting some waves in there. Oh man. One phone call and I've fallen, I've fallen so far behind. Okay, so. Uh, oh, that's Your mine. trees are looking pretty good. I like my trees. Yeah. I think mine are a little stockier. Than they're, yeah, but I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, okay. All right, so now I was just saying, 
Cody, that when you're done with your trees, you just want to throw in kind of a, a replicate your tree, but really loose and oh, break okay. it up and do some waves and stuff like sure. that for the water. Yeah, and don't quite go to the edge um, of the black at the top. Yeah, where's my paint? Oh, here it is. Okay. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to make the reflection. Yes. Yeah, all right. Let's try that out. Yeah, reference your own tree. So your reflection should be, you know, a mirror image of your tree, but yeah. really loose and, and uh, yeah, focus mostly on the, on the trunk and less on the branches. Okay. As long as you get that trunk in there, you're, you're doing pretty good. Okay, I need more. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to reflect a, a branch, and I'm like, is it, if it's like this, so then it's going to be the opposite angle, right? Yes, I guess so. It would be a mirror image. Yeah, okay. And then there's a little bit. I'm going to do this branch. It's going to be fine. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we're going to add in a little bit of a reflection for our shrubbery. So we're going to go back to that brush that we were using, doing the, the dots, like the, whatever we call that. Add just a little bit of paint to it, and then we're going to leave a line mostly um, against the water's edge. So we're not going to go right up to the edge of the water with this reflection because we don't want to muddy this too much. So give a little bit of breathing room in between the edge of the land and the water, and then add the shrubbery at the bottom there. Oh, okay. Oh boy. And we're also going to be adding in a uh, reflection for the sun. So where the sun is, you don't have to worry too, too much about the um, reflection of the trees. Just noticing that my brush is not dry enough. Oh, yes. And you don't want to go too far down either. Just, just a little hint. I think that's enough. And it can be broken up over some waves and stuff too. There we go. Oh, that that's not dry enough. When are we gonna do the branches? Like, cause I have three trees here that don't have. Oh branches. yeah, we can actually do that now. So using that smaller brush, we should have done this the last step. I forgot about it. Uh, just go in and add add your trunks. We're doing teamwork. We might need more black paint. How are you doing for black paint? Uh, I'm okay, unless, I mean, we might need more, I don't know. There we go. I kind of have mine in there. I think I'm okay. We're pretty much done the black paint once we finish this step. All right. Yeah, and if you want to, you can even add a few little scraggly naked trees um, in this area. I might do that. I'm just going to use my thin brush and right here I'll throw kind of a tree without any leaves just to keep the other one company. Oh boy. There we go. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. If there's going to be one dead tree, maybe there'll be more dead trees. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to do that. I'm just throwing it in there. It's a little hard. There. That's pretty good. Oh. That is hard to make a tiny dead tree. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you wouldn't see the edge branches. You'd really only see a couple major branches. So yeah, actually that looks great. I wouldn't even, I would stop. I don't, really know if, I don't think it looks great. Okay, why don't you add agree one, to, add agree one to, to disagree. What? You can add one to the other side if you want. Okay, just a second. Okay. I'm gonna, where am I putting this one? If you wanted to add another branch. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put one there. more branch there just to, just to square everything up. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we're going to add the reflection of the sun. 
So this is really the only time it's super important to have a clean brush because we do not want any black in this paint. We're going to be going back into the color that we made for the sun. I'm just making these reflections here because they don't have, they don't seem to exist for much. Yes, you know, you should do that. Definitely. Sorry, and then, oh, we're taking a brand new clean brush. Yes. All right, I only have one left. Okay. So we should still have, if you don't have any paint left over, just mix some more yellow and white. And we're going to be adding in the reflection of the sun here. Reflection? Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I guess I used up my white. Okay. Well, you got a bit here. There, I just used up your white. Okay. But we have more white. Want some more? Yeah, a little more would be good. Okay. Oh, that's right into the black. That's all right, though. I don't think that's... Is that white? Yeah, it's dry. <laughs> I'm just, like, grabbing a little bit of white. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, this is the reflection... Can I fix my sun? Because I don't like how hazy it is. Sure. Yeah. All right. You could actually make that a really big sun if you wanted to. The closer a sun is to the horizon line, the bigger it appears. So you can just go ahead and make your sun. Oh, white. yeah. Now that it's dry, this is easy to make it white. Yeah, but you don't want it to be pure white. You want to have a little bit of yellow in there. Oh, I want mine to be pure white. Okay. You, do, right. you do you. All right. <laughs> All right. So now when we're adding the reflection of the sun... It's very much like the tree where we want to break it up and it want, we want it to be a little bit scraggly. Um, and we're just going to go straight down and the further we get, the less that reflection is going to be. So I'm just going to, again, I'm using a flat brush, using the side of my brush, and I'm just going to add little areas here that are... Okay. Like okay. highlights. We can't see what you're doing. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, so I'm I'm going in. Oh, that probably moved that it. feels too wet. Do I want to be dry brush here? No, or? you don't want to be dry brush. You want you want you don't want it to be scratchy, but you don't want it to be like super wet either. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of moisture on my brush. Okay, so I'm just moving my canvas over here, so it's easier to see what I'm doing. So I'm using the side of my brush, and I'm just gonna. Add in a little bit of. Oh, that goes down. A, that goes down a ways. Yeah, it it does. There. Oh, Something like that. I just got told that I, that I need to cut it out with the branches. I just want to make more branches. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, it's, that's essay. Oh, well, good for you. Yeah, someone's got to call you on your branches. He's helping. He's helping me because I'll I'll get out of hand with brushes, with brushes and branches. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, though, that really goes down. Yeah, yeah, it does. If you look at the sun, like at the sun, and if you look at a reflection in the water, it can come all the way to you. Just like... It depends on how still the water Helpful tip, don't look directly at the don't sun. Don't look directly at the sun. That's a good helpful tip. Thanks. That's, a, that's your science lesson, you guys. Oops. Don't look at the sun. It's not your friend. Okay. All right. You ready to keep going? Yeah, I'm ready. I just went, I just went on a tangent. You're just trying to do science lessons? Yeah. I guess that's appropriate. Okay, right. so now we're going to, we're almost done. We're going to add some highlights and some shadows to the water. So we don't want a ton of paint on our brush, but we're going to do just a little bit of a more yellow than we have in the sun. So yours is very white. Mine has more yellow in it. So I'm going to go in with even a little bit more, more yellow. What? Oh, uh, it's good. I'm, I, I definitely have to listen. Kendra is the one who knows how this goes. I've done these before. I really like a sunset painting with a, you know, sunsets and silhouettes is a quick thing you can do that's pretty. So I definitely want to listen to listen to my wife when she tells me how <laughs> to do these things. Okay, what are we doing? Now we're going to add in these highlights. Yeah. And these are straight across our canvas. They're in line with the horizon line. And this is kind of, we're showing waves catching the sun. And by every wave, there's also going to be a little shadow. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to add our highlights first, and then if we want to go back in and add just a little bit of a shadow underneath the highlight, that'll make it feel slightly more real. Okay. Yeah, but where something comes up, it goes down, so you get the highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, as you look at water. So, um, And then we don't want to make our highlights all the same length or the same thickness. They're very organic. So... Just kind of go across, lift your brush up sometimes. 
I might even have a bit too much weight oh on my boy. brush. I'm gonna. I have too little. I'm gonna add some yellow to mine. Put some of them, some close to each other. I think I have to switch brushes. My brush is a little bit too dirty, and the paint is clumping. So. Yeah, I'm gonna switch brushes. Well, that feels too yellow. Uh, I like it. I like that amount of yellow. There, switch into this guy. And you're going flat, parallel with the uh, yeah. horizon, and like right across, but we're just skipping some spots. Yeah, we're skipping some spots. And we don't want them to be the same amount of space from each other. We want it to feel organic. So that's something else we just have to keep that in mind. Not too much paint on your brush as you're going across. Boy. And make sure some of them run off the page. Oh, like all the way off? Oops. Yep. Like if you were to take a photo, not all of the highlights would be right in the middle of the photo, right? Sorry, I keep using your palette. No, it's fine. You can use your. I went. I was the one who didn't want to share, and now I'm taking all your colors. Oh yeah. See how that's turning out. Oh yeah, there's got to be some in this in this bottom thing, right? Yep. Those... Do we want those to be bigger because they're closer? Uh yeah. In theory, they would be. So you can do that. And then I like to add a little bit of a highlight right against the um, horizon line that we have at the top too. So I'm going to go through and add a, add a highlight there. Okay. That doesn't have to be across the whole thing. Yeah, sure. Now I'm stealing some of your yellow. Well, that's fine. There we go. Oh, I'm just looking. How are we? This is uh, easily Sorry, easily our longest uh, uh, live stream. Sorry, guys. No, it's good. I'm glad that we're I'm glad that we're getting this done. People gives people a chance to tune in if they want to, and uh, take in what they want. Okay. Now we can add shadows. In light of time, I'll try to move on. So with shadows, we're going to be using basically a little bit of black in our red, but not too much because black tends to take over. So just like a teeny weeny bit of black and then add it to red. Here, you can share my color. Yeah, sure. There, that's about, that's about as much as we want. So no more black than that. Here, I'll show you. This is the color I just mixed here. So it's just a little bit of a dirty, dirty red. Oh, I added some, I used my, should I not use my yellow brush? Uh. This is my... On that one's brush. a good brush to use. Um, just make sure it, here, clean it off with this. Yeah, brush. there we go. Okay. This, uh, this is a good method having a little cleaning. I need to hold this up a little bit. Okay. I have a lot of trouble painting up and down. I kind of like to I, 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 I told her that we would try painting up and down, uh, but I kind of usually plate and paints fat, flat on a table. Oh boy, I see that. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot. It feels like a lot of dark. It is a little darker than my original painting, but I think it'll be okay. Um, you might want to here. Why don't you add a little bit more red? You can go really dark at the ones at the bottom, and then maybe the ones that are closer to the top go more into the red world. Mm. And I have so much more control this way. I'm trying to. I'm trying to change the angle so we can see what you're doing. Camera, camera, camera two just stopped working, so we only have camera one. Okay. Oh yeah. So it's everywhere where I have waves. Yeah, everywhere you have a highlight. Not necessarily everywhere, but in a lot of places where you have a highlight, you can add a little bit of dark to the bottom. Um, and I'm just gonna towards the the top here where it gets into the yellow area. I'm just gonna go in with red as my shadow color because it, that that red I built is a little bit too dark. A little bit too too black. So now I just have red. I'm going to add that to the base here. Ideally you want these to be 
very, very thin lines that just kind of barely touch the page. Oh. And that'll help, uh, it'll just help give a, give a little bit of depth to your water. Oh, that's not working there. I'm getting like no, thick, hard lines. No, it's too lines. thick. So um, clean your brush off. Just put a little bit of paint on the tip and go in with this red because you're now in, yeah. All right, so I'm going to redo, sure I'm gonna try redoing this one. Very little paint on your brush. And then I, I kind of have to paint up to down. Like you're, you're painting this way. I find that really hard. Um, and then just barely touch the canvas. There. And then we're done. All right. Excellent. All right. Oh, we haven't added our bird. Oh yeah, that's important. That is important. You Sorry, you get the guys. bird. You get the bird assembled, and I'm I'm gonna go get our girl. She's been being super good while yes. we're painting. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay. So yeah, the bird is just going to be a silhouette. Basically, we can draw a two-leveled snowman and then throw a beak on it and a little bit of a tail, and then you have a bird. Um, birds of prey tend to have beaks that go like that, or like they have a little point, and that's what I was trying to do with this one, um, and then give it a little bit of feathers on its head. But yeah, you could basically just throw a snowman up there with a beak and it would look like a bird. So however you want to do your bird, you can do it. You could also do a long-necked bird if you wanted to. Um, but I, I quite like this guy, so I'm just going to do that all over again. Alex, so. do, you see what, do you see what Mommy and Daddy are doing? Here, I'll go a little closer so you can see me paint the bird. Um, I'm going to dilute my paint a little bit with water because I want it to be go on thin. I want to be able to have some more control. And I'm going to put my bird right here. So I'm going to start with the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, I'll put him right here. So here's the bottom of my snowman. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's right. And then here's the top. So you can kind of see how I just have a little two, like a little snowman shape. And then I'm going to scrape most of the paint off my brush, get a really nice tip on it, and then just kind of throw in a beak. And then I'll add just a few little feathers to the back there. And then I also want to add a tail. So I'll just do that. Brush your teeth. You wanna brush your teeth? Yeah, we should brush your teeth, sweetheart. Mm -hmm, that's a great idea. There we yeah. go. Now I have a little bird All in my right. tree. So we have a we have a now we have three really nice sunset paintings that probably would sit okay next to each other. Um, and that's I think a good place uh, for us to end this live stream because somebody's got to go brush her teeth. Uh, so I want you guys. Uh, thanks, Kendra, for coming and doing this one. Oh, she's got to do that. Okay, uh, and thanks everybody who tuned in. Um, I want you guys to remember. Whoa! To, uh, <laughs> there we are. I want you guys to remember to wash your hands for twenty seconds often, and also take care of each other. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>